There is quite a bit of overarching guidance that you may come across as digital service owners trying to deliver world-class services. Some of this guidance includes the service owner role, and some of it impacts the teams that service owners will need to interact with on a regular basis. This is not an all-inclusive list as you could imagine, but it's meant to cover what we're seeing most frequently in the market today. This will be a fast review, but the presentation notes are meant to be used as a takeaway that can be later studied and referenced. The approach we felt would be most useful is one where we describe the overall governing body for the guidance and then call out the particular guidance and how it affects digital services. Axelos is a venture created by the UK government and a private company. The private company has several different product and service offerings around service delivery. The most popular guidance is the ITIL framework. The IT and ITIL stands for Information Technology, while the IL stands for Information Library. So, Information Technology, Information Library. They have other best practices in their portfolio for different levels of project, portfolio, and program management, and also one for cybersecurity. When it comes to operations around digital services, most people have used or at least have heard of ITIL. Of all the guidance we'll discuss today, it's very likely that ITIL is one that is most widely adopted and understood. The Open Group is a nonprofit consortium made up of many companies, mostly technology companies. Guidance is mostly focused on business outcomes that are mostly achieved through technology. IT for IT is a reference architecture that we see frequently. It's more popular in certain industries than others. And this reference architecture is very similar to ITIL from Axelos. It's very similar to that ITIL framework because it provides guidance for the entire life cycle of a digital service. TOGAF and RGMATE are popular in the enterprise architect and CIO worlds. The guidance in these two bodies of work is more around how services are delivered in the enterprise and how to best leverage what the enterprise already owns. Service owners may be exposed to RGMATE models in conversations with enterprise or cloud architects. The digital practitioner's body of knowledge is the encyclopedia of exploiting digital technology for the betterment of an organization. The member version is 523 pages long and expands everything from digital alignment of a digital driven organization all the way through to consumer satisfaction. When your service is just a concept or your team is iterating on a new idea, it will typically go through a project management office, sometimes called a PMO, or something like it. In these phases of new development or improvement, you'll likely run into business analysts, business relationship managers, sometimes called BRMs, and of course project managers. It is also very likely that many of these people are both certified in and practice Project Management Institute guidelines. The PMP, which stands for Project Management Professional, is a coveted certification across almost every industry. PMI has added other certifications over the years, but none are as popular as their PMP certification. PMBOK is sort of like the digital practitioner's body of knowledge that we talked about under the open group, but it's all about on-time project delivery, program management, project management, uh, those types of things. It's all around the delivery of, of the project. Scaled Agile is a private company out of Colorado that has several well-known and documented methods for working in an agile manner. The company provides consulting and oversight in addition to maintaining their broadly accepted standard called Scaled Agile Framework. Agile is a term that you'll hear, you're going to hear quite a bit. It mostly comes in when describing the management of software development Due to its success, it's also moving into operations and the line of business teams as well as a way to manage all different types of work. NIST is a government organization that develops and maintains measurements. A lot of these measurements are in the physical world. 
There is one that comes up regularly in the digital world, though, the world that we work in. And that's their framework for cybersecurity. It provides a standard way to measure and mitigate security exposures that present themselves in a digital world, like the one we're talking about now. It's a security framework that's broadly adopted across most industries in the United States. I'm not sure about other countries. The TBM Council focuses on aligning or allocating costs. They especially focus on the alignment of technology-based expenses to the services that they provide to consumers. So going all the way back, it's easier said than done in some areas. Things like software licenses, you get the hardware underneath of an application service. That's not that difficult. But when you start trying to determine percentages of shared resources or the percentages of a facility's expense on a particular service, things start to get pretty messy. These are the challenges that TBM addresses. DevOps is a community, but there's no formal organization that supports the community. It's more of a group of organizations, but nothing's formalized like the Open Group Consortium we talked about earlier. The community is completely organized around the technology industry events, and they're, they're called DevOps Days. So they meet at DevOps Days to discuss new content around what DevOps is. The bodies of knowledge that emanate from the community is all around the development of the initial code, which starts with writing the code, the process of getting that code into control and building that code into a cohesive solution, then moving into the testing of what was built to verify the correctness, moving into packaging, releasing it, then configuring it to provide the service it was intended to provide. And because the code is the application, now we need to configure that application so that it provides the value that we're looking to get out of it. And finally, it moves into monitoring of that service to make sure it meets expectations on a regular basis. So that an entire life cycle from that development to when you're monitoring that's the, the service the application is providing is all part of that DevOps pipeline. Service owners that have applications developed in-house will likely use DevOps at some point. Others that use off-the-shelf applications may still be exposed to the DevOps way of working and working with the vendors that serve the DevOps market. ServiceNow is a private organization that is solely focused on digital services and serving the teams that deliver the digital services. The Common Service Data Model provides guidance around the coordination, the configuration, the orchestration of all the technology needed to bring a, a digital service from concept all the way through to operation and into a, a continual improvement phase. We'll spend an entire section on the common service data model next. There was a lot in this section. There's three big takeaways I want you to go away with. Number one, there are many forms of guidance that help organizations to deliver digital services. We've heard of frameworks, standards, reference architectures, just to name a few. Number two, standards tend to land in silos. Security teams have the NIST cyber standard. IT teams have ITIL and IT for IT. Project teams have their PMP certifications. Finance teams have TBM. Find out which of the standards your teams leverage and dig in a bit more on those standards. That concludes our Bodies of Guidance general lecture. And as I mentioned, we're gonna dig in more on the Common Service Data Model next.